Hello and welcome, fellow comrades. Victus here. As you can see, in my search for Victorian era mods, I have found, and I am sure that many already know this mod. This is the Khartoum Sulu mod for Napoleon Total War, depicting the maddest war in which the British Empire is going to take control definitely over the region of Egypt is the end of the 19th century is brutal because in these times appeared the machine gun let's get on with it and we are going to do here a let's play on the British campaign which is called here the Oriental Campaign. This mod is very, is very old. Apparently, at the beginning, it was, it was intended to portray the campaigns of the Maddest War and the campaigns of the of South Africa in the Sulu War, but instead, this instance, this mod has just the Oriental Campaign. However, it contains certain battles that you can play in Play Battle. You can find certain battles of the Sulu War. The most famous ones are there. For the purposes of this Let's Play, I'm not going to play the battles of the Sulu War. I'm going to go straight into the Oriental Campaign. So let's get on with it. In the Oriental Campaign, we have the Bedouins, the Turks, the Mahdist, of course, which is the enemy, and the United Kingdom, the British Empire. We can see, of course, Queen Victoria as the leader. We are going to be playing as the British Empire, and here we see the victory conditions. We have just one game mode, which is historical, and it says capture and hold 10 regions, including Calubia in Egypt, Galilee in Levant, North Sinai, and Damascus, including the Western Delta, which we already possess. So you are going to see when we get into the map. Complete by the end of your turn in the late December 1899. So we have, because we start in 1884, we have something around six years to end the war so let's go here in gameplay options and we're going to set the battle time limit and show cpu moves because it's important so let's get on with it see you on the map so at first glance we can see the map of of the nile here we see Egypt, we reach up to the to the area of Khartoum, this is Khartoum, and we have control, we are in control of Khartoum, southwards here, we already know if for all the sake of geography, uh, south in here we have Ethiopia, and here we have the enemy, which controls Cairo, which is Calubia. Over here we have some uh, another faction, which is the Bedouins. As you can see here, the gray areas are controlled by the Bedouin tribes, and which we are not at war with, actually. And then we have here the Turks up to, ja to Jaffo, uh, here and Accra and Damascus up to the north. Of course, we possess Nicosia in Cyprus. The British Empire possessed Nicosia in Cyprus. Another thing that uh, you have to understand in, in terms of units, we have a navy here in the port of Abu Kir. Here we have a small navy and we are about to recruit a 38 gun fifth rate. Now this navy is going to be very important for us to attack a navy that could possibly be in here, including including navies from the Turks. Uh, of course, 
uh, over here we have a a harbor with which we can recruit merchantmen and we can send our navy over here and and get a little bit of reinforcements here if they are needed but up to this point i don't think they are going to be needed so what do we got here we got here a huge army with herbert kitchener which is already besieging the region here of mahal al kubra in gabria we have another big army with charles gordon over here and right off the bat we see enemies approaching here there's this guy here Stuart the brave and uh, i'm going to read a little bit of what it, it is on the description of this guy this is Co colonel john donald hamill stewart was a british soldier and he accompanied, accompanied general gordon to khartoum in 1884 as his assistant he died in September 1884, attempting to run the blockade from the besieged city at the hands of the Manazir tribesmen and followers of Muhammad Ahmad al-Mahdi. This guy, in the real history, is going to die in September 1884. So we're in February. So from this time to some months ahead, this guy uh, is going to die. We're going to make him the hero of, of our Let's Play, because... In this timeline, Mr. Stewart the Brave is going to win and is going to be alive at the end of the Let's Play. And another important thing that we have here is the Maxim gun. The Maxim gun was the first used by Britain's colonial forces in the first Matabele War in Rhodesia in 1893 to 1894. During the Battle of the Shangani, 50 soldiers fought off 5,000 warriors with just four Maxim guns. The gun played an important role in the swift European colonization of Africa in the late 19th century. And we have the possibility of just recruit six of these. Six of these guys. How do we recruit them? Well, if we see here in the barracks, this is the... This is the barracks building browser and we have the drill school drill school makes makes us uh recruit the most powerful units which are the normal infantry the royal highlanders we're going to take a look at on these units just in a bit but we need to find the actual building that is going to allow us to recruit the maxim gun so we have the cannon Cannon Foundry is the one is the first. We have the experimental howitzer. We don't have a an actual image here for this one, and we have the Maxim gun. Now, several things that are important here. Let's let's see that the the first time that is going to be used according to the background here. Is going to be in 1893 and we are in 1885 so we have a huge advantage against our enemies with this technology because we possess one maxim gun over here i haven't seen the maxim gun in the other um in the other armies over here and i already know that we have this powerful technology in our side before the actual first time of the actual British Empire. Now let's let's read a little bit here, which is which says, however, the destructive power of the Maxim gun in colonial warfare has often been overplayed by popular myth. Modern historical accounts suggest that while the weapon was effective in pitched battle situations such as the Matabele War or the Battle of Omdurman in 1898. Its significance was due to its psychological as much as its physical impact. So it's the sound of the actual, uh, you know, metro use thing that you go and you shot two so many uh, so many bullets at the same time that it's going to impact psychologically into the enemy. So that's one important thing to take into account, and we're going to need cannon foundries to build that. 
first thing canon foundries where can we found canon foundry foundries can we do canon foundries instead of this instead of school of poetry now number one what does the school of poetry does it gives happiness for both classes so this is important so canon foundry is another thing that we need in order to get uh, things done in here but we're not going to deal with that up until the point that we take a little bit of territories here and to do that we have quite a bit of armies here because we already know that this army here this army over here commanded by this army here commanded by mr herbert kitchener this guy here is besieging there and it's very near to Ke to cairo and over here in the south we have another problem which we already talked and we have this able general charles gordon so we have two great generals and we have this guy here so let's get on with it what we're going to do here is very simple first i can see here that in comparison with this area here down here which is called damanhur and here in alexandria alexandria the people is a little bit less um pacified we're going to send this gentleman this gentleman is uh kilpatrick and i'm going to send him here what this is going to do is to make the the ruling class under control i think we have if not if i'm not mistaken something something else here no we don't we can always find something here in agents so we have another guy here yeah we have theodore nicholson another gentleman here and we have erwin dudley a spy we have a spy here know that there's a spy here so we're going to use him to have a a little bit of a sneak peek over mansura and the Mieta. now what do we got here Desire. we got nothing we got nothing here so we're going to send him uh, southwards so we can see what is happening here in cairo so let me send this guy into cairo just going to be much better send him somewhere around here this is going to make us open up a little bit of information about these two regions here so straight up i'm going to take the army here and i'm going to take the uh, most important units so these units to to recruit these units is not enough with barracks with barracks as you can see the only unit that you can recruit is the sudan sudanese infantry but with the drill school you're able to recruit the most powerful units for the british empire what do we got here we we got the food infantry the normal food infantry and we have of course the royal highland regiment these are in terms of infantry and we have as well here the York and Lancaster Regiment. For some of them, there is going to be a limit to recruit. And then we have the Dragoon Guards, which are basically, if they are Dragoons, they are mounted. But interestingly enough, Dragoons here are mounted in camels. And then we have the Duke of Cambridge's own, which are the cavalry. Now, let's, let's do a quick comparison on the actual uh, infantry. So we have three types of infantry. We have the York and Lancaster Regiment and we have the 42nd Foot Infantry. Straight ahead we can see that the normal, the normal infantry with the with the pith helmet and the Cody and the blue blue trousers, they are exactly the same as the York and Lancaster Regiment. They have a range of 170, 62 accuracy. 72 reloading skill 20 ammunition each and then we got the 11 melee attack 9 charge bonus defense of 14 and a morale of 16. difference is nothing there's they are exactly the same but there's the elite troops here now you can see how the morale changes here drastically to 19 for the scottish regiments as well as the charge bonus and melee attack is going to increase by one the only difference that is going to, that we're going to get is going to be the accuracy 
Highlanders are going to be more accurate than their line infantry counterparts. In comparison, the Duke of Cambridge's own, which are the cavalry, in comparison with the Dragoons, of course, we're going to see more morale for the cavalrymen, more charge bonus, a huge charge bonus of 42, which is devastating, and a 14 melee attack in comparison with the 10 melee attack of the Dragoons. The defense is going to be higher as well, and then in terms of accuracy, of course, we're going to have more accuracy for the normal cavalry and a much better reloading skill. Of course, this has to do because we these guys have more experience, but if we if we can understand right now what are the units that we have, well now we can go and proceed with what we have to do so the first thing is to take and to consolidate the actual british troops in one single block as you can see here we have as well here two, uh, normal cavalry we have highlanders and we have here mr garnett wolseley now here we have the sudan infantry sudanese infantry i'm going to call them the Sudanese infantry, I'm going to send them here. Because I want the Sudanese infantry to deal with the Mieta. And then I'm going to send these guys right into the bridge. Because these guys are going to be sent to take Mansura. That is going to be the plan over here in the north. And as well, as you can see here, we are recruiting this. And it would be good to recruit a 38 gun fifth rate. The amount of recruitment cost of this is going to be 724. So let me see if there's a 30 a 32 gun. A 38 gun and a 32 gun. I think this one is going to be better. The 32 gun fifth rate. And over here. I'm going to go straight to the drill school. We have still money here with which we can repair these, of course. And that's it for and now. We can see the beautiful pyramids here in the south near Cairo. And then we're going to deal with the situation ahead. So what is happening here? So let me show you here. I'm going to take all my uh, the, the entire army. We are intercepted. Uh, this was something that I I was not planning to do. Uh, we can go and attack this one straight. We're going to deal with this. Okay, so now let's have a look at the terrain. It's basically open ground with, with a little bit of hills over here. We can move we can move our troops slightly here into the hills. This could be a good position. Or we could move them here, which will bring them forward. So another thing that I can do, let, let's take okay, let's take these guys here. I'm going to put these trenches. And I'm going to show you something interesting about these trenches. So I'm going to take uh, here. This guy's here. Place the trenches here. These two other guys here and place the trenches here. Then the Maxim gun. I would place I would place the Maxim gun here. I see that if I place the Maxim gun here, I would have a better yes, a better line of sight here because it's a slightly elevated over here. As you can see, there's slight elevation here. 
So this is the most powerful uh, unit that we have. Let me move it slightly in front. So this is the best piece of technology that we have, and we have it before the actual time. You can see here bullets, and this is very, very neat. Here we have them. So we have here the target fire, which increases the accuracy for a short amount of time. And we have the toggle fire at will, which I'm going to cancel because I want to be precise. So I'm going to take the actual commander here, the mounted in these camels. Now, something interesting about this, you're going to see this. These guys, the these guys that are mounted in camels, they have the option to do pike square formation. So this is very neat because you're going to see how the camels, they're going to bunch up and they're going to make these uh, this, uh nice formation that i personally have only seen on pike and short um iterations so what i'm going to do with these guys is i'm going to dismount them and i'm going to place them here okay okay then we have here mr mr stewart which is this guy here. I would assume that Mr. Stewart is this guy over here, the the guy with the with the Hussar uniform. And of course, this is something neat because we have instead of trenches, we have these carts turned upside down to block stones, slingshots, or even even block arrows. For the enemies and this is very very nice very nice torch here in which you can see that so uh let's uh let's begin the battle let's see if we can in some instances most likely with this guy we have this thing that will allow us to deploy stakes So now we're going to deploy here the stakes. So this is going to be more difficult for the enemy to charge against us. Heavy cavalry reporting at the double. Okay, so let's move them back here. Let's wait for the enemies to to come into into contact with us. Nobody told you to stop working. For the queen, and here we see how we are preparing for battle. Battery reporting. Every single line infantry that we have here they have this toggle fire at will they're going to fire at will whenever it's needed we can see that they are sending here uh, the bodyguard Are you questioning my right to command? Orders understood. Infantry elite. 
Okay, so we are going to get ready for the beginning of the fight. There we go. So they are trying to charge here with these guys. But they were completely obliterated by us. Okay. That's fair enough. So we can move our troops here. They are sending here more bishop people. These are mounted in camels. Harm. Ah, this is the actual. This is the actual bodyguard. This is the leader of the of the of the army. Okay. Okay, they are approaching here. Do you journey come? The journey. Do it up. Are you are questioning my right to command? have another maneuver here. Okay, we have obliterated these guys. They're trying to move here as well. Let's take our, our general here. So there we go, we're going to shoot with the with the Maxim gun. Let's take these guys here. Okay, they they reached here. 
There we go. Okay, these guys don't have more... They don't have more uh, ammunition here. Shoot at these guys here. Here comes the, the charge of the Maddest Warriors. Okay, we try to do this. They're getting in here. So let's uh, turn around here. Seeing this guy here. Let's shoot at these guys here. Okay, let's try to let's do the square formation here. This is a fierce battle indeed. Shoot up these guys here. Let's protect the, the commander here. Here we can see the devastation. Infantry. Yes, 
Okay. General stops. It was a bloody battle here. Yes, sir. <laughs> Color Sergeant Bond. Color Sergeant Bond. Be quiet now, will you? There's a good gentleman. Upset the lad. Open fire! Yeah, it was indeed a bloody battle. Let me try to get into the camels. Be quiet now, will you? There's a good gentleman. We'll upset the lad. Yes, sir. Okay, these guys have uh, wasted their munition. Yes, sir. So I will try to get these guys General into stop. the camels. And let's charge against these guys. Which they are actually running away. So we won, but with a high price, we lost a lot of units, as you can see, they assaulted our defenses, and we are now very, very, in a very, very bad situation. Okay, hopefully... Our commander is still alive. Our commander, the brave. Yeah, he's still alive. So we lost 422. And the survivors got a lot of... Uh, a lot of uh, levels. We defeated almost all of their troops. Now, it was a fierce battle indeed. Sorry, sir. Hello? Okay, so let's send this guy here. Forward. And I'm going to recruit as many as these guys. I can't. So we are now in a very, very bad situation. But at least Mr. Mr. Stewart is still alive. Let's end the turn and let's see what happens. I see an army approaching from the east. The Turks So apparently the Turks are at war with the Bedouins. So we have the 38 gun 5th rate over here. And we can already see here in this harbor in Port Said that our enemy has 
two two uh, boats on on its fleet yes. so let's advance here these are the Sudan Sudanese line infantry so what happened here logging camp we're going to fix this one We're going to send At your our spy here. Ah, oh, we already know what is happening there. We know that here in Cairo, our enemy is in a defensive position here with all of its, um, the major majority of its troops here. How can I be he here is Theodore, Theodore Nicholson. What is this? College. Send this guy here. See if he can steal technology here. There's nothing he can do. So I'm going to send this guy. We already know everything here, so I'm going to send him to visit the awaiting your instruction. The pyramids here. How may I serve? Okay. Now that our agent is visiting the pyramids, let me see the diplomatic relations. We're friendly with the Bedouins, and the Ottomans are at war with Bedouins, and they are at war with us as well. So that's something that we have to take into account. Which is not good, because we're going to, to have to fight them as well. We have a lot of enemies here. So now, we can still recruit more. We're good with this. And then we can try to make these Bedouins our friends. Let's talk with the Bedouins here. Let's open negotiations and request an alliance. And they will join wars with the Mahdists. And we're going to... We cannot give them technologies. Let me see if they are going to accept this. Yeah, so we are now allies with the Bedouins and they can attack the, the Mahdist here. So now we can attack these. We could either, either attack this army here Let me see if we can... Okay. I have to think about what I'm going to do with this. Because I have to tread carefully here. Now, a good, this is a good position because here we have large star fort. So it's going to be impossible for them to assault here unless they have technology. Something that I don't think they're going to have uh, ver uh, very soon. So it's important right now to send this guy here to Mansura and take Mansura because we need a little bit more money, as you can see. So this is going, it's going to be very important to take this. Because there's no enemy here and we see an enemy approaching here. We can deal with this by demanding surrender, which they are going to accept, peacefully occupying this area. And now, perhaps, are we recruiting here as well? It's quite interesting. Let's recruit more guys here. We're recruiting here. I don't remember to have recruited those guys here. So now we can send this guy. Ah, now you see. These guys are going to be angry. The lower, cra the lower class is angry, so I'm going to send him back. So that's the situation. What can we do with this guy? Well, of course, we can send him here. 
and infiltrate or sabotage. But I think infiltration is going to be better. It's going to infiltrate Zagazig. That way I'm going to be able to see what we have here. This is the surrender of Mansura. Okay, we have infiltrated here. Now, let me move this guy here. Keeping vigil. So we have a look at what we have here. Where are these guys? Marist. They, they are like peasant peasantry, I think. So let me see if we can... If we can make peace with the... With the Turks, it's going to be good. Request peace and trade agreement. They don't want. Okay. So that's it by now. We need to think about what we're going to do with the Turks in the meantime. And definitely we're we're going to, to have to deal with this. So up to this point, we have begun the Let's Play on the Maddest War for the Khartoum, Khartoum and Sulu mod. This so far has been a very, very nice mod for me. I'm very sure that you are enjoying this as well. So don't forget, this was Victus. See you in the next one.